Okay, Captain America, you're live, bud. Right now? Yeah. Morning, everybody. Morning. It's nice to see y'all here today. Um, as you see, we are a thin group this morning, so I'm yeah. going to rely on you guys. Well, <laughs> <laughs> relatively speaking, thin. there's just two of us. Um, help me sing. Sing loud, sing strong, okay? Go ahead and stand up and give your neighbor a handshake, a hug, or a kiss, whatever. Tell them they're great and you're glad to see them here. Share a little love. You're so lovely, Dougie, buddy. Love you guys. Love you. Love you. Tuesday, September 3rd at 6 o'clock here at the church. Annual picnic. Please bring your whole family for a great time of fun and fellowship on Sunday, September 8th at 1230 for our annual church picnic at Lake Dorothy. The sign-up sheet is in the foyer. Um, please let us know if you're coming, how many, and the food dish. Please let Margie or Joey if you have any questions. There's also an update here that there's a deadline for the sign up for the picnic is yeah, September 6th, so we can get the hamburgers, hot dogs, steaks. It's bring your own steaks, by the way. Yeah. Anyway, outdoor music service. We'll be having an outdoor music service Sunday, September 29th at 10:30. Trunk or treat. We'd like to reach out to the community again this year. 
by participating in the Trump Retreat festivities. We will be having our annual Trump Retreat here at the church. We encourage everyone to decorate your cars and pass out whatever goodies you would like. We'd also like a man uh, table set up to collect prayer requests and getting contact information for those attendees who are comfortable in giving it. We have, oops, excellent, prayer requests. We are starting to include prayer request cards that was in your bulletin here today. If you are more, you are more than welcome to let Pastor Gage know of any requests you may have, but it is uh, another way for you to request them as well. Fill out as much information as you'd like and drop it in the tithes and offering box there at the back of the church. And he will follow up. Tithes and offerings in that same box. There is that deposit box for your tithes and offering. An online giving option can be found at our website, calvarywesleyan.net. Is there any other announcements? Well, I do just want to say I think that was a great uh, idea that actually Jessica Beckel had, I think, with a prayer request. But also, we just want to make sure people know that this is a way of encouraging you to offer your prayer request instead of just feeling like you have to stand up or you have to let one of us know during the service. I mean, it's not about letting me know, just you put it in there and that way uh, if you'll indicate, well, hey, I'm fine with you praying this during the service, like for the next Sunday, or I'm fine with you, you know, putting it on the, the prayer list, um, you know, or if you want us to keep it private, just let us know on that too, because we want to, you know, be respectful of people's privacy. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's in regards to the prayer request. Very good. Speaking of prayer requests, he praises this week. Okay, wow. Quiet crowd. Mm -hmm. I know, all right. This place is packed, too. You ought to see it. <laughs> <laughs> we got more than the compact center, you know? <laughs> all right. Well, all right, let's sing another song. <laughs> this is another one. I expect y'all to sing nice and loud. It's easy. Oh. Kids are dismissed for Children's Church. Oh, yeah. That's all right. <laughs>
stand that bluesy vein for a little bit.
นะเราเห็นเ
still not unlike that man, we are living during a time where increasingly we face daily and quite often those opportunities to choose the truth over lies. And often that's through another person, a group maybe, that comes to us and says, well, is that really what happened? Maybe you should say this. You know, a little white lie is okay every now and then. But unfortunately, sometimes we might be the ones who think telling, telling a lie uh, every now and then is okay. Yet I like how one put up of this topic when he stated, those that think it permissible to tell white lies soon grow colorblind. Because they don't realize that the little lie is a full lie nonetheless. And there is no excuse, or should it ever uh, be permissible, to say, well, let's tell this little twisted uh, lie. But all this to say, my focus will be on helping you see that even when you are told so many twisted truths, and today our culture seems to do very well at this, your best response will always be to tell the absolute truth. All right? To not try to sugarcoat it, not try to, well, um, you know, I, I can sort of bend a little bit and it's still not as bad as it could be. So that said, since we as Christians are followers of the Christ, Let's consider this morning what he did when faced with the devil's lies and temptations. Because ultimately, he's the one behind the bad. So let's look at what Jesus said and did in the way of good when faced with the tempter. It's in Matthew 4 that we'll be looking. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there or use the screen. Okay, we're going to be looking here at what happened when Jesus was tempted by Satan even after fasting for quite a long time. In verse 3 of Matthew 4, we begin this. We see the tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. See why he did that? It wasn't by accident. Jesus had just fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. So he said, Tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he will command, okay, quoting here, uh, a Bible passage, and I'll get at that, but he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And there he said, if you will bow down and worship me, uh, I'll give you all these things. But Jesus said to him, I think I forgot a verse there, I apologize. Jesus said to him, away from me Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So you see what's going on here and what Jesus was trying, uh, or what the devil was trying to do to Jesus and tricking him with these things? So there's a trio, meaning again, three things I want us to look at here, and here's what they are. First, when you're at your weakest, when you're going through uh, what feels like it's never going to end kind of season in your life. That's when the devil tries to be at his strongest. Then, don't let the if fool you. Not just in this passage, when the devil was doing that, using that if statement, but in your own life, and I'll talk about what I mean there. Finally, measure the full truth against half lies. Because you're going to hear a lot of half lies. And what I mean is, in your life, people you talk to, the half lie is no better than a full lie. All right, or no worse. Or no better, that's no better. Okay, it doesn't matter. It's a lie. A lie is a lie. But then let's look here. When you're at your weakest, the devil tries to be at his strongest because he is not unaware of what you're going through. Case in point, remember Job. All right, Job was going through a pretty low season in his life. Lost a lot of family members, stripped of much of his physical health, 
okay, and here comes the devil. Okay, I didn't have this in my message, but think about that. The devil came along saying, hey God, I guarantee if you let me come to Job, I'll be able to get him to mess up and to denounce you, curse you, and all this. Okay, so he knew what Job was going through, and so he does in our life. Okay, yeah, he's roaming around, he's not everywhere at the same time, but I truly believe that if he's not there, his deadbeat demon buddies are very aware of what's going on as well. We can't blame everything on Satan, though. Sometimes it's our own flesh that's the root cause. But here I want to talk about, let's remember this. Being a Christian doesn't mean you're going to be immune or exempt from hardship. In fact, I truly believe this, and we read in the Bible that the godly will be persecuted. If you are really living as a Christian, and you feel like everything's always going well for you, then you might not be a Christian. I know that sounds harsh, but it's the truth. Because if you are truly living as a godly individual, you're going to be having some hardships in your life. That doesn't mean you don't have the response of joyfulness through that hardship, but it does mean, okay, hey, maybe I'm doing something right because everything in my world seems to be going wrong. Because when you're living for God, the unseen forces notice. And sometimes, just like everybody else, you go through hard times. The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust the same. So let's think about this. And actually, I was just talking about this with Brother Jim Baltic today. And by the way, Patty, good to see you joining us online today. And Vincent, I hadn't seen you before. Along with Margie Bennett, great to see you today joining us online. Hope you guys are doing well. But I want to talk about this health and wealth gospel that's out there today. All right. It's something that, yeah, it's appealing to us. Honestly, I would love to believe uh, because I'm a Christian, hey, I can expect a brand new car or, you know, maybe three Cadillacs or whatever. And, oh, I'll never get sick. I'll never have problems. It, I'll, I'll have all this fancy jewelry and that will be a sign of God blessing me. But that is not biblical. Consider that Satan knows that when things are going well for us or we seem to have no troubles in our life, okay, um, we as Christians, when we are experiencing those times, we are probably less likely to remember who our true strength comes from. All right, we need to recognize when all seems well, it is much easy uh, to turn to trusting what we can do to make things happen as we want, and we forget about it is God who even has given us every good gift that we deserve or are blessed with. The Bible says every good gift is from above. All right, it's ultimately Him who is the reason for the life that we are experiencing today. Jesus is our prime example of one who knew in whom he could trust, fasted for 40 days and nights. And we read in the Bible that he probably became hungry. He became hungry. He wanted some food, I'm sure. And it was at such a time the devil tried to trick him because he knew that Jesus might be more vulnerable or weaker physically. Still, while Jesus gave up food in order to also draw near to his father, he also expected temptation from the tempter. He knew what Satan was going to be coming at him with and to be ready. But we must remember that when we too are weak, God is strong. Bible says that when you are weak, then you are strong. Okay, and that gives God room to show up and show off in your life so that there be no doubt who the one is providing deliverance for you. Still, let's see what Jesus did. Okay, remember when Satan's saying, hey, turn these stones into bread? And while Jesus gave up food in order to also draw nearer to his father, even when he was weak physically from not eating that for that season, so, when we are going through a trial, it is from such occasions that God can get the glory. When I was 18 years old, struggling to even get through a day, and I think I just shared this with you last week, um, 
to get through even a day without feeling hopeless and miserable and depressed. Um, and by the way, I just ask that, you know, we've got some even here that experience depression and it's hard in life. It's hard to even want to be around other people when you're struggling mentally. Um, but I felt like that during that season of my life. I didn't want to be around a lot of people. I just wanted to uh, lay in my bed and, and just sort of, you know, feel uh, helpless. Uh, but when he delivered me from that terrible season of my life, uh, which by the way, during that season, uh, I wasn't a Christian, uh, he helped through that season to guide me to the right people who ultimately would help me get on the other side of the depression. And to this day, I share how God delivered me from those terrible months of my life. He deserves the glory. And as I think I shared with you last week, uh, you know, it, it was during that season in which I prayed to God, and I knew where I was, I wasn't right with him, um, that ultimately, because he delivered me from that, and I remembered that in September of 1996, I gave my life to Christ, remembering that even me, he still cared for me, and he brought me on the other side of that horrible season of my life. And he gets the glory for that. But you know what? Those seasons of victory, they aren't meant to stay to you or with you. You are to share them with others when they're going through similar times. And as Christians, we need to remember we are pilgrims in a foreign land. This is not our permanent home. I mean, I know how we go home and, you know, we're going to leave here and we're going to say, I'm going back to my house, I'm going back to my home. But ultimately, those are just for a season. Someone else will probably live in those homes someday if the Lord allows for this earth to continue that long. All right. But we will be, if we are a believer, in a permanent place of residence in which God will be our presence forever. And we will have access, unlimited by the way, to the Lord forever. So this means we should not be fooled into thinking that our lives will always be full of sweetness and bliss. There will always be no trouble. We will always have peace. In fact, if you never experience, and I've already said this, troubles or trials, you might need to ask, am I a Christian? What am I not doing right, God? Because Satan tempted Jesus, who knew no sin. And I assure you, none of us are above the one we follow as a Christian. Jesus experienced trouble and hardship. Jesus humbled himself for us. Jesus died on a cross for us, burying the nails through his hands and his feet for us. If the master that we're following was willing to experience that for us, I assure you, you and I as his followers, we are not to experience a life in which everything is going great all the time. I'm not saying make it your goal. I'm saying make your goal to follow Jesus. He says to come and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. Okay, you take up your cross, not looking for trouble. You're just following Jesus. Trouble will find you because you love him first above the world. The world doesn't want that. What they want is a people who want everything to feel like it has to always go well. But if we go into life knowing that things aren't always going to go well, we can then not only help ourselves, but help others when they're going through tough times and seasons in life. But I want us to go back here, I'm getting off the topic a little bit. Don't let the if fool you. The if there that Satan used trying to cast doubt upon Jesus as to his identity as the Son of God. He did this when in verse 3 of chapter 4 in Matthew, he said, if you are the Son of God, if you are the Son of God, command that these stones be made into bread. See how he was trying to trick 